Hello everybody and welcome back to the ASUS YouTube channel. This is JJ and we're bringing you something a little bit different this time around. This is going to be one of our do-it-yourself videos. Uh, we're going to be focusing on a build that's centering on one of our new P8 Z77 series motherboards. Um, so first and foremost, we just essentially want to give you a little bit of context of what we're going to be explaining here. This is going to be covering some of the key components that you're going to have to have uh, when considering a new build. And we're going to be essentially going from a kind of start to finish process where we're going to be looking at the individual components that we're going to be bringing together as part of this system and then from there showing you kind of some of the key parts uh, whether we're talking about like CPU installation, RAM installation, graphics card install, uh, maybe some quick pointers on cable management, things along those lines. Overall hope, hopefully making it a little bit easier for you guys to understand uh, if you're a first time builder or maybe a little bit of a novice builder you haven't built anything in, in quite some time, you know what's some of the initial uh, kind of stepping stones you need to go through when not only considering some of the components that you're uh, going to be working with as well as you know how to come together and build a final system. Um, so with that, let's go ahead and have a little bit of perspective on the componentry that we've got ahead and decided to choose uh, for this ASUS Z77 build. Uh, first and foremost, we want to get a little bit of perspective in terms of what's maybe the, uh, the focus behind what you're going to be able to do with the system. Uh, this in itself being a Z77 platform means it's going to be a, a fairly um, moderate enthusiast based system. So you're going to pretty much be able to do a lot of the normal uh, functions that you would expect uh, from a desktop. So um, whether that's the gaming, whether that's maybe some light video editing, audio editing, web browsing, you know, downloading, all the kind of normal expectations you have for a desktop, um, this type of system is going to be able to definitely uh, provide. And, uh, you know, of course, you can make tweaks and adjustments as needed. So maybe if you want to go to a higher level of gaming performance, maybe consider an upgrade to the graphics cards um, or, you know, depending on the storage requirements, maybe upgrade to a, a mechanical hard drive in conjunction with the SSD. So there's going to be a, some, some flexible points. And if you guys, of course, have questions, make sure to just drop them here on the page. Um, so let's uh, start off with the components that we have. So first and foremost, uh, we're, we're looking at the motherboard. So this is our P8Z77-V Pro. So this is right essentially kind of the in the middle of our motherboard Z77 stack. The Pro really kind of hits all the sweet spots and pretty much giving us every single key technology that we're looking to have as part of this build. So we have, of course, USB support. We've got uh, gigabit network support uh, with an Intel LAN with some special networking uh, software. We've got wireless support. We have Crossfire and SLI. Uh, you've got overclockability functionality for you guys that uh, want one step, you know, one button overclocking, or for you guys that are taking a little bit more advanced, you've got that flexibility here. So all around, this board's gonna pretty much give you every single level of functionality that you need. You've got a lot of expansion, a lot of slots, a lot of serial ATA ports. So you're not gonna really be hurting in any regard um, with going with the Pro model. So from there, um, one of the most key components here is going to be also the graphics card. Now, the Ivory Bridge CPU platform does support a considerably improved graphics core, but since we're interested in being able to give ourselves some moderate gaming performance, we've gone ahead and tapped the HD7770 graphics card uh, featuring our DirectCU2 uh, heatsink and fan design. So this is going to allow the card to be very quiet and cool uh, while we're gaming. And it's going to be focused at about 1680 to about 1080p based gaming with about moderate to sometimes high settings. Um, so it's, it's not going to be as expensive as some of the higher end cards in let's say the 7800 or 7900 series. Or of course if you're an NVIDIA guy, uh, considering maybe something like a GTX 560 uh, or maybe even newer higher end solutions like the GTX 670 uh, or 680 series, uh, this makes for a pretty you know, sweet spot. Plus, if you ever want to add more performance down the road, as we noted, the motherboard supporting Crossfire, you could go ahead and drop in a second card and uh, get some considerable improvement in terms of the gaming performance. But overall, it's a solid choice to be able to give ourselves uh, gaming flexibility as well as a strong multimedia playback support. Now, going into multimedia, we've got here our uh, Asus Blu-ray drive. Now we've gone ahead and tapped that just because Blu-ray, you know, it's a very consistent uh, medium. It's been out for a long time. You know, when I uh, head online or I'm going over to my brick and mortar retailer to pick up a, you know, a movie, I, I really like the quality of Blu-ray. So I want the flexibility of being able to play that back natively in my system. And of course, uh, with it being a combo drive, you got the flexibility of doing all the other things that you would need uh, with optical media, whether that's uh, reading DVDs, reading CDs, ripping uh, CDs, burning DVDs, pretty much everything under the sun except uh, for the little bit more expensive functionality of needing to actually write Blu-ray discs. Uh, if you did need that as an option, we do also have Blu-ray burners uh, that give you all the same functionality, just with the plus points of also burning BD media, which might be good for you guys that are maybe doing content professional stuff, do a lot of editing, maybe need to back things up along those lines. 
So with covering kind of those three points, let's get into some of the more key specifics. Now, you see right here over in the corner, we've got just uh, the standard Intel uh, retail uh, CPU cooler. Um, now, we don't specifically have a CPU on hand because depending on your usage model, one CPU might make more sense than another. Um, for you guys that are maybe going to considering kind of an everyday box, going for a little bit more price affordable standpoint, but you want to maximize performance, the 3570K is a really awesome part. You know, you get great overclocking potential, it runs cool, um, it's going to give you essentially about the same performance in gaming uh, as the, even the more expensive 3770K. Now, if you're somebody that wants gaming, you do a lot of uh, audio and video work on the system, you have applications that can readily take advantage of higher core counts, then the 3770K is going to really shine. Uh, both the K parts, of course, allow for overclockability, so it really just comes down to you know, what your budget might be, and overall, what's your actual work model going to be. Now, there are also non-K parts uh, that can still offer you really impressive gaming performance and everyday usage. Plus, you still have access to like the QuickSync technologies for easy transcoding uh, on your CPU, as well as for a decode functionality if you're maybe not even going to consider using a discrete graphics card. If you're doing predominantly Blu-ray playback, web browsing, you know, YouTube, things like that online, you could get that all done with the Ivy Bridge integrated graphics core without any problems and even have a little bit of moderate gaming performance. Uh, so that's the main reason why we haven't necessarily selected a CPU pre-designated for this build. Now, in terms of the memory, you can see right here we've got some awesome uh, blue Corsair Vengeance uh, memory. These are four gigabyte DIMMs for a total of 16 gigabytes. This gives us a lot of flexibility and overall a really long lifespan in terms of the amount of memory that we're going to have with the system. So uh, for about you know, 90 percent of users, we're never going to run into a situation where we're going to exceed the amount of memory that we're installing in the system. Um, it is actually 1600 in terms of the radio frequency. So this is going to go ahead and give us a higher level of performance than the default, let's say 1333 uh, memory that's normally out there. So we're getting a little bit faster performance, we're having a high density, we've hit that sweet spot. For you guys that are a little bit kind of tweakers and tuners that are out there, also having 16 gigabytes gives us a little bit more flexibility to do cool stuff like maybe RAM disks or RAM caches to help us increase the performance even further uh, than already uh, utilizing the high-end parts that we have, whether that's you know a fast CPU as well as an SSD. Now noting on an SSD, we've gone ahead and also tapped right here. Corsair's Force GT, so this is their flagship series. It's pretty much their fastest current SSDs that they're putting out on the market. Uh, that's the GT uh, disclosure there in terms of just standard being a Force 3 SSD. It's a 120 gigabyte model, so you've got a lot of room actually in terms of being able to fit your operating system, core applications, whether that's like Office, even Photoshop, and even a couple of games. Now, uh, keep in mind that, of course, we've got a lot of SATA connectivity on this motherboard. So, you know, if you're somebody who thinks you really want to load up a lot of stuff on your system, maybe high resolution photography, a lot of games, you know, music, video, whatever it might be, then, of course, it's very easy uh, to go ahead and add on something like a, you know, one terabyte, two terabyte, even up to a four terabyte hard drive on this system. Uh, the motherboard fully supports that without any issues. So you have more long-term storage storage where you can prioritize taking advantage of your OS and applications on the SSD to get the best access time and the best application performance while keeping things that you might not always use and just need to store on that mechanical volume. But for us, we're focusing a little bit more kind of on a slim, slim down everyday box that's uh, not going to have a huge amount of stuff on it, just the stuff that we really care about. So 120 gigabytes uh, really fits that well. Uh, we've got two more items to cover here. One of them is the power supply. A uh, very critical component in the system because it's going to, of course, be powering everything. Uh, so we've, we've actually selected a little bit higher end PSU than sometimes people might normally expect, uh, but we've got sensible on the wattage. It's only a 650 watt, which is more than enough, even if we had two GPU uh, two GPUs in this system built, um, because we've gone ahead and selected it from the Gold series. So that's 90% power efficiency, which gives us also the plus advantage of it being silent. Um, in most situations, in terms of your desktop usage, this fan is not even ever going to spin. So this, this essentially power supply is never going to output any noise when you're working on Word documents, looking at photos, browsing the internet, uh, things along those lines. And of course, when it is actually working under load, maybe gaming, doing heavier editing, it's going to still be very, very quiet, almost inaudible. So we really, really love uh, this option here. Plus, it's a modular PSU, so it's going to be able to make cable management a lot easier when we're working with it. And lastly, touching into cable management, we've got an awesome Corsair Carbide 400R. Uh, it's probably one of the absolute best chassis on the market in terms of price to features and functionality. Um, we have a lot of flexibility in terms of airflow. 
So for you guys that are really concerned about keeping everything cool, you got a lot of mounting. You can do front 120 millimeter fans, uh, top 120 millimeter, 140 millimeter back. You've got expansion up the yin yang in terms of the back of the board. You've got front USB 3 connectivity. Pretty much you're not going to be left wanting in any regard. Uh, you've got some really, really nice options in terms of cable management that when we pull this out, um, everything is threaded through so that we can easily route the cables. You can even see that here they've actually bowed it out so that we actually have this cool ID, but at the same time it's actually giving us more space to kind of uh, have all our cables in here so that we can keep the inside really clean, really tidy. And on top of that, almost the entire chassis is toolless. Um, so it's going to make a really great option for getting everything in there quickly and easily and, and without really having to have a lot of tools on hand. Now that we've gone ahead and covered some of the key items in terms of uh, what we're going to actually use when building our system, we want to cover some of the key aspects in terms of what you're going to need to have on hand when you're going about building your system. Uh, one of the things that we're going to be covering first is going to be something you might not expect and that's actually going to be something to write on like a, a notebook, a notepad, uh, it could just be a bare sheet of paper, uh, it could also be maybe the actual um, inventory list or the part list that you might have printed out if you purchased this online or that maybe you took uh, to you know your brick and mortar retailer if you bought these parts from a local computer store. Um, but essentially the reason why you want to have that is on hand is to make sure that you have everything that you need right then and there because you don't want to go back and forth. And two, um, it also is going to be a quick and easy way that you can go through the actual steps. Um, so let's say first off, if we're starting with a CPU installation, you can check that off. Memory installation, check that off. The main reason being is that sometimes when people first go about building a system, they forget one of these steps and then they get everything installed in the case, they put on the panel and then they go back and they run into a problem. Uh, and it, it's a lot more complicated sometimes to start troubleshooting once you have everything already inside there and you're looking to see, did I forget to do this or forget to do that? And so if you go ahead and you have your baseline checklist at hand, you can essentially make sure, okay, made a connection from the motherboard to the SSD, made sure to attach the CPU cooler to the actual motherboard and connected the fan header to the motherboard. All those little things are good checkpoints uh, that just you know having something to write on is going to help you out with. Now moving over to some uh, of the more specific technical parts, uh, it's pretty going to be straightforward. In most situations all you're really going to need is a, a screwdriver, uh, preferably both a slotted as well as a cross uh, based uh, screwdriver set. Now here we've got you know your normal kind of uh, screwdriver kit that you can get at any kind of, you know, a hobby store or anything like that. And, and this will work fine. Uh, there's nothing definitely wrong with this. In most situations, this is probably what most people are going to utilize, and it's great. You generally want to go with something that might be maybe referred to as like a jeweler's um, screwdriver set or a, a hobby a screwdriver set just because uh, on the largest side, the, the actual sizes are going to correspond to what are the screws, and sometimes you might need access to a little bit smaller uh, threadings. So you just keep that in mind that you don't necessarily want to go with uh, what you would normally use for normal construction purposes. Now here I have a, a, a bit nicer set of actually screwdrivers. Uh, these are specifically from WIA. These are ESD based so they're uh, sensitive in terms of not passing over any electrostatic discharge. Um, they cost a little bit more uh, but they do give you a little additional uh, level of uh, security and safety. Now these if you're utilizing something like this can essentially replace the need to, to either have to ground yourself so holding your hand on a chassis um, or using like an anti-static wristband or something along those lines. So those are two options that you have in terms of screwdrivers. Um, I would generally not advise powered screwdrivers. If you feel very comfortable with them, then you can utilize them. But you want to be very careful to not over torque your screwdrivers and cause flexing to different parts or, or potentially stripping out the heads. And it can be quite complicated to deal with that after the fact. So uh, I usually recommend manual and always going with finger tight. Uh, lastly is an optional item, not required, but that's going to be a magnifying glass. Uh, this one that I have actually even has an LED on it where if I press the button, the LED shines. Uh, and this is just going to be in some situations, uh, once you get inside of the chassis, you're sometimes looking for connectors or fittings or heads um, where it might be a little bit hard because of course on the inside of the chassis things are darker. If you have something like this, you can go ahead and illuminate it and see a little bit more clearly the specific header that you're trying to connect to, especially for pin heads. Um, this is going to be a great option and also when you're first initially unpacking your motherboard, uh, it's a great way to inspect the socket and make sure that there's no damage to the pins, which sometimes are such in close proximity to themselves that looking at it with the bare eye can be a little bit hard and sometimes you might not be able to catch everything right off the bat. So that gives you a little bit of an overview in terms of what we're going to need to actually get things set up. So let's actually start with the process of getting this PC together.